All right, I set up this little uh, demonstration just to show how to wire up or how I like to like wire up a 2.1 system. And uh, we're just using a set of Mica X's and Audio Source Amp 100 and the Martin Logan Dynamo 300 that I'm giving away this month of April, the 14th year, for oh Lord, whatever. Um, the way this is hooked up currently is a single mini USB to a JDS Labs ODAC, RCA cables out to the line 2 input of the amp, and then the amplifier has A and B channels, and that's the only thing that varies on this amp from other amps I recommend, or anything, any of those little T amps, is you only have one set of these terminals. Now, since I have two sets of terminals, I wire the speakers to A, they're up there to A, and the B channel I have wired down to the subwoofer. And the subwoofer only has a block for inputs. Some subwoofers will have inputs and outputs, in which case you could just do from the amp to the subwoofer and then out of the subwoofer, out to the speakers. But since we have A and B switches, that means I can literally on the front of the amplifier say, I only want to hear the subwoofer, or I only want to hear the speakers, or you push both buttons in and you hear both. Now I have this set up and playing, and I'm not sure how that's going to sound on the GoPro's mic, but uh, I'm using the unswitched output of the audio source amp. I've got the actual Dynamo 300 plugged into that, so we only have one cord, which reads 32 watts of this whole setup to play right now. Let me tell you, it'll get very, very loud. Now, if you didn't have a B channel, like I'm assuming most of you don't, you would just, and I made these with the shortest wires possible just to show off, you would, instead of having these go to this imaginary thing, you'd have them come up and plug into the exact same spot as the A channel. You would just unscrew this and put two wires down at the same time and tighten it in. Or you'd get a set of banana plugs because this can be, sometimes it can be real tight and tricky. You either will use the mount holes on the, I don't know where this focuses, the mount holes on the bananas or you would get four banana plugs and then stack them. So you would do something like this and you'd have one banana that goes to the speaker and one banana that goes down to the sub. Now, the subwoofer, when a subwoofer has inputs like this for speaker wire, the amplifier isn't doing anything. For the, all it's doing is sending signal down, it has no idea where it's sending it, and the subwoofer is just tasting it, hmm, and then amplifying it all on its own, that's why it's a powered subwoofer. So, no matter what size amp, no matter how crappy your little Leapi entry-level $20 amplifier is, if you have a $1,000 18-inch subwoofer, you're just going to do this and it's going to work just fine. Because it's just looking at what the what is intended to be playing, and it's taking the low end of that and keeping it and amplifying it on its own. Now the speakers up here are obviously just red to red, black to black, and they're playing. So there's, there's these. This is the simple end. This is the new end for people who want to know. Now uh, another thing that's asked a lot is how do I hook a subwoofer like this up? To a set of powered monitors. Now I don't have any powered monitors here unfortunately, but we'll pretend these are powered monitors so ignore all this wiring and what you'd end up doing is coming out of your source RCAs, you would plug these and here's, here's what the problem is. If you plug these into your speakers then you don't have anywhere to go. If you plug them into your sub then you don't have anywhere to go. So what you need is a splitter. An RCA splitter like this and I would plug them, a pair of them, here into the subwoofer you take your wires, you'd run left source to left sub, and then the other end of it left out to the left powered monitor, and then right to right sub, and then right out to the right powered monitor. Now, the detriment, to do, there's detriments and the other opposite of that, the good bits, to doing it different ways. The benefit of doing it, that's what it's called, benefit. The benefit of doing it like this with speaker wire into level inputs is that when you control the volume the amplifier goes up and down and it makes the speakers louder and it also sends more or less signal to the sub so the subwoofer will get louder and quieter at the same time with one volume control now when you start getting into the signal end of it RCAs 
if the RCAs are bouncing in and out and the monitors have volume controls on them, you can shut the monitors all the way down, but the subwoofer doesn't know you're doing that, so the subwoofer keeps playing really loud. So what you have to do when you're using powered monitors on the subwoofer is hook it all together, set your volume so everything is balanced, and then never touch those volume controls again. Only ever control it with something on the computer, either the volume control on Windows, or you can buy something like the new Emotiva Control Freak, which is just a RCA volume knob. So you would come out of your computer into a control box and then out to your subwoofer powered monitors, you'd still never touch them. You just set to whatever balance is good and walk away. Now, as far as setting the knobs on a 2.1, that's going to vary based on a lot of factors. How efficient your speakers are, if your speakers are really efficient, that a very little bit of volume from the amplifier is going to make them play properly. But that very little bit of volume may not come to the subwoofer and tell it to do the thing right. So you have to turn your levels way up. And if you have great honking hard to drive speakers and you have to run your amplifier near maximum, then you're going to be sending a lot of power into this and it's going to go, whoa, and you're going to turn it down just to get it to match. What my suggestion is for subwoofers, turn them all the way off, level to zero, turn the frequency to either half or slightly below half, because here it goes from 45 to 150. And I know these will do at least down to 70. So somewhere in there is 70 before it rolls off and this will roll up to that value. So get it, just guess. You're never gonna, you're never gonna you can't tell 100% what's gonna be happening. Shut off the, the, the uh, volume on the sub, put it up, and now start adding some sub back in. And of course the music's gonna get quiet, wait. Obviously put on music you know. And I don't know if you could hear that, but it's exploding the desk. Yes. Since these are pretty efficient speakers, this is a really powerful amp, I have to get this to about halfway to really get noticed. Let me jump songs. Nope. 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 No idea what's playing. There you go. So, let's put the volume up in the amplifier. I don't know if you, you probably can't hear that, but it is definitely... Oh, God. Now, I also recommend not standing behind your system while doing this, but it's a lot easier for me to show you how to do all this if I'm standing back here. I can rotate it and put it on those little furniture moving things. Uh, so, yeah, set your volumes. And it really helps if you have a friend or a lover, or a well-trained dog, someone that could let you sit where you're hearing the, the speakers and then start slowly turning this subwoofer up. And you want to turn it up till you hear it, and then you want to stop, and you want to back it off. Just You want it to be... What this does is about 6% of what you're hearing. Because this is gonna, these speakers are going to go from 20,000 hertz, which is way up high, birds tweeting and inaudible to most humans, and only some dogs can hear it. And you come down to the vocal range and to the, and to the you know, guitars and bassoons, and all those instruments come here. And the only thing that this will do is pipe organs and bass drums, and that's it. 95% of all your music should come from your speakers, and only 5 should come from your subwoofer. If you walk into a room and you say, damn, that subwoofer, it's too high. Turn it down a little bit. It's just there to, to pick up where these cut off because they're so small. Only a big driver in a big box can make those sorts of sounds happen. Is it still playing? Yes. <laughs> Rotate this without dropping everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a highly doubtful thing on this. I also don't usually film with the GoPro in my hands, but I really need to get close to do things and show off. So here, we could put this up. B only. Only the subwoofer is now playing. So we could turn this up. All right. Things are going to break. Not the subwoofer, just all this room is going to fall on the floor. 
So, we know what the subwoofer's doing. Now we could switch to just speakers. Ooh. Now, if you think that just when you do that, if you switch to speakers, you gotta turn the sub up. You gotta lower this down. Put just the speakers on. So now they complement each other. Now you could sort of hear if they're complimenting each other. Again, I'm way too close. And you'd want a friend to do this while you're sitting down. And now to put them both on on this amp, you just have to do B. Okay. Now both are playing. Soul coughing? No. B four. No. Oh. Ah. Toonami's drum and bass album was amazing, by the way. Let's put it to halfway. Don't yank any chords like the O-Deck. Yes. The 2.1 to half. And I could probably give one of these away if my patron ever picked up, because we're looking at 80, 100, and then 130. And I could probably throw in a Behringer deck. At, well, here's the thing: it has to be $300 because if I the shipping on this this whole thing would be a fucking nightmare. So, if you want to know what my patron is, go look at the link in the description, where I just want to be able to buy things and then give them away. For the, with the whole the money from the patron. The patron thing. I would just use it like a $5 a month raffle. Everyone who pays $5 wins. Everyone who pays $5 has a chance to win. Whoever wins gets everything. And I'll include interconnects. I've got so many of these wires. So many. And I'd love to get different speakers every month. I would Actually, the $300 bracket is only for 2.0. So I would get... You'd get amplifier and speakers and they would just be different amplifiers and different speakers every month and then if it got up to five hundred dollars a month which would require a hundred people entering to win on patreon then it would be a 2.1 and something like this or something with bix or i don't know i don't know if i do used i guess i wouldn't do used but maybe maybe a used amplifier i got a couple vintage 80s J japanese made amplifiers hanging around Use it as an excuse to get rid of my amazing junk. Yes. The only thing that throws this out of whack is the ODAC, which is more expensive than the entirety of the thing anyway. Spin. Yeah, this is like $150, and this is $130, and this is $100, and this is $80. And the, the highest I've gotten this to go without going deaf is about 90 watts. What are you doing back there? Oh god, you too. Yeah. All the way up is like 50 watts. So there you go. 2.1, how you hook it up, speaker wire, speaker wire, or speaker wire, speaker wire, speaker wire, or... If you've got powered monitors, you could split the source. I don't recommend splitting the source simply because um, you get vo you get volume control issues. You can't use your amplifier volume, you can't use your powered monitor volume, you can't use your sub volume. The well, sub volume you should set and forget anyway. But just keep that in mind. And uh, what some amp what sub sub subwoofers will do, and I should say this before I get yelled at, is when they have ins and outs they will alter the signal. You'll give them everything, zero through a million hertz, and they will take out what they're going to play based on where you set this, and it'll only send the speakers the frequencies that this isn't trying to play. So you don't get doubling. Because if this can play 80 hertz, and you put this knob all the way up to 150, then everything from 80 to 150 is going to get played with these and from this, and it's going to sound like S. Now... The ones that have RCA ins and outs, some of them do the same cutoff with signal, and some of them don't. And 
I think most of them do that with the uh, speaker ins and outs. But when you do a system like this, you're sending full range to your speakers and full range to the sub. And it's up to you, you, wherever this camera lens is, you, to adjust this frequency cutoff so that what this is playing down to doesn't interrupt what this is playing up to. Which is a trial and error thing. You're going to get good at it after like 16 or 17 systems. I guarantee it. All right. So now on to the official Martin Logan sub review, which I have a whole crazy microphone thing set up to do that. It's ridiculous.